So my dudes Valk here, going very quickly as fast as I can, go over 1.2 because dear god 1.2 is looking to be a banger. I'm not going to be showcasing any footage, any of the trailers, any of that because the story looks amazing and I want you to experience that on your own. So if you don't want to be spoiled by any trailers, anything like that, this is the video for you because the, the story looks really, 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 really good. Uh, it looks fantastic. So these banners... The first banner coming up is Blade. It has Arlon, Sushang, and Natasha on it. It looks to be okay. It looks to be a pretty decent banner, but let's be real. If you're going in this, you're going in it for basically just Blade. There's not really any other character that works really, really well with him right now, except for maybe Locha, because Blade can self-proc Locha's stuff. Arlon could work potentially pretty decent in that team as well, but this is going to be his banner. And then coming up next after that is going to be Kafka's banner. Kafka's banner looks cracked for the Kafka team, but you're going to want to be going into Kafka's banner basically on Fresh Pity, either that or if you're going your 50-50, but you want to do a good number of multis on Kafka's banner because you really want Luca and Sampo both for Kafka's team. If you don't have Sampo already because he, this is the first banner he's featured on, same thing with Arlon, they're both the first banners for each, uh, you're going to really want to try to get Sampo for Kafka's team, at least one copy, same with Luca, at least one copy. That way the dot team gets together and really pops off. So then and after that there's a whole there's two new areas and there's new weekly boss there's a new weekly boss and then there's also new mats you can't pre-farm any of the stagnant shadows for blade before he comes out and you can't pre-farm the weekly boss mats because it all comes with a new area so you can only really pre-farm trace materials as well as uh, XP and credits if you need all that. So that's the only stuff you can really pre-farm. So don't worry too much about stagnant shadows because you can't farm it until the patch goes live. The first event, Tales of the Fantastic. Once again, I'm not gonna be showing any footage. I'm just gonna be giving you the TLDR. If you wanna watch it on your own, you can watch the live stream on my channel and see my reaction to it. Uh, just go to it, it should be an upload earlier from today. But Tales of the Fantastic, basically you fly around as a side crane, you go over, you grab a package, bring it back, and that package contains the buffs that you then do a combat stage for. AKA combat event, AKA I love it. I love combat events in this game, they're super fun, and this is just another one, and like I said, all these events are combat events, so I'm pretty excited for it. Then we get to the main combat event of the patch, which is Underground Treasure Hunt. Basically, if you've ever played another gacha game, you'll have this like grid that you open up. You go to the grid, you go square by square inside the grid, and you kind of clear out each one, and there's a chance that one of these squares in the grid could be a comb could be like a fight that you have to do. You have to reach the end of the grid to go lower, and you have to try to get lower and lower in the floors. One of the rewards is this new thing, a chat bubble. This chat bubble, whenever you're getting texted by you're getting your daily text message from one of your characters and you're texting them back, you'll have a chat bubble pop up now, or whenever you're messaging your friends, you can have a chat bubble pop up as well. Another thing is this right here, the custom relic crafting materials. It's going to be tied to this event. That's why I call this the main event, because it's going to be super fun. It looks to be really, really fun. It looks to be none of the tedious fetch quests that was part of the museum event that I didn't like. It looks to be just micros, like this little mini game, and then combat. I love combat so much. So <laughs> this is going to be another combat event, pretty based. Next, this one, where are you, Mystery Trotter? Basically, it gives you a little compass that gives you a clue. You gotta solve the clue to find out where the Trotter is. You go to the Trotter, and it's just like the first time you encounter Trotter normally. You beat it, you get jades, you get rewards, you get goodies. I'm pretty excited for this as well, because once again, another combat event. I love combat events. This one more so is you just get to solve the riddle and just go beat up the piggy for some good rewards. I'm pretty happy with it though. That's all I need. Give me a little bit of combat. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Next is a Forgotten Hall update. They're going to add a new, I don't know exactly because they didn't explain it too well on the stream. They said they're adding the Shen Show version of the Forgotten Hall, which I don't know if this, this isn't Memory of Chaos. This is like the original first 15 floors you did. I don't know if this is going to be another 15 floors, if this is going to be added on to the 15 floors that are currently there. I don't know exactly how this is going to work, but this is going to be just like the first 15 floors. Um, uh, basically, you beat the first stage, you get Yukong. So that's dope. And also all the free jades that come with this. This game's insanely generous with the amount of jades it gives you. And then World 7 opens up. And you get another heart to store credit. You get all these goodies. All this stuff on top of it. And also to go along with it, we have two new planar sets. They look to be okay. The first one seems to be really good. The second one seems to be 
okay because effect res isn't really used on a lot of characters it could be something good for locha because he does like effect res because he doesn't want to get stunned so this could be something pretty good for um locha but other than that these planar sets seem to be pretty okay the first one seems to be really really strong it's just going to be a matter of time to see and then of course you know we get that planar fusion with the new world so you'll have plenty of opportunities to farm it whenever we have double rewards we have a brand two brand new relic sets to go along with the new area the first one is Longevious Disciple. I'm pretty sure I said that right. Increases max HP when the wearer is hit or the HP is consumed by an ally blade set. The crit rate increases for a certain number of turns. This effect is stackable. Pretty cool. Messenger Traversing Hackerspace. This is the set that I'm pretty sure I'm going to slam on basically every character going forward. So I'm going to farm this set a bunch. Uh, when the wearer uses their ultimate on any ally, including themselves, speed for all allies increases for a certain number of turns. This effect cannot be stacked. Yep, it's just that's just really good. That's just insanely good. I'm going to be using that on a bunch of characters going forward. And then we have you can't see Realm of the Strange here. We gotta, we gotta just do, 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 uh, there. We go. <laughs> Realm of the Strange. It is double relics rewards. You're going to have that as an event. That's also really really cool. And then companion quest. Yu Kong and Kafka companion quest. I'm really excited for Yu Kong's companion quest. You guys know my video from yesterday. I was getting into her story. I was asking for a companion quest, and literally the day after we get one. I'm so excited for Yukon's companion quest. I really am. I want to know more about her character. I want to know if we could help her. I want to know if we could help her through a depression, try to help her out and all that stuff. I'm really excited for that. And then lastly, probably the most important bit of information, Gift of Odyssey makes a return for the third time, meaning this is going to be something that happens every update. Meaning, yes, in Honkai Star Rail, we get a free tin pool every single update. It's amazing. I know. I'm really excited for it. I'm really happy. I should have the pin on the pin comment below. I should have all the codes for all the jades if you guys want to do the codes. But yeah, that's basically the 1.2 update. Looks really, really sick. I'm really excited for it. Um, this is to me is an amazing update. I'm really, really hyped up for it. I highly recommend going and watching the teaser or even the whole live stream for yourself. The live stream was really good. I this is honestly one of my favorite Hoyo live streams, period, because it was straight to the point and all it showed was a lot of flashy cinematics. It showed off some of the new areas and new enemies, etc. But if you want to stay spoilers free, I get it. You want to experience it all for yourself the first time, I get it. There will be nothing I show on this video about it. So by all means, go nuts. Anyway. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.